Fat burners do burn fat, but maybe not in quite the same way as you think. This is Nick at barbend.com. Today I'm addressing one of the thorniest, most controversial questions in all of supplements. Do fat burners even do anything? And to what extent can you expect results from them? So this is a really tough question. I've looked at a ton of research and I've enlisted the help of Dr. Asta Kalra. She's a New York based physician who specializes in weight loss. Let's try and get the skinny on this very fat, juicy question. And I'll tell you the answer right now. There are indeed studies you can point to that suggest that compounds found in fat burners like this do indeed help the body to increase the amount of fat it burns. Now, look, the best ways to increase fat oxidation, probably getting plenty of sleep, exercise also really helps. But yeah, these compounds do appear to increase fat oxidation as well. So today we're gonna to be talking about the four most popular ingredients you're gonna get in fat burners and what they might do for you. I'm gonna talk about, I think the most important and useful effect of a fat burner, and honestly, I don't think it's the fat burning. And also we're gonna talk about a few things you really should know about these products before you buy them. Some potential issues that can really trip some people up. So before I dive into these four ingredients, I just wanted to mention if you want to see what I think are the best fat burners on the market and looked at a ton of them, just Google Barbend Best Fat Burners, that should pop right up. So the first ingredient I want to talk about is EGCG. That is probably the most researched, backed, most beloved, most popular ingredient in fat burners. It's a type of antioxidant that is found in green tea. It's a catechin, which is a type of antioxidant. And there are a lot of studies showing it can increase fat oxidation anywhere from four to 33 percent. This is temporary and the dosage is usually like between two and 500 milligrams. So that's pretty reliable, although of course the range is really wide. It's hard to know precisely what it'll do for you, but it seems to increase fat oxidation. But is that the end of the argument? Here's Dr. Kalra. In another study in 2016, which was actually a randomized controlled trial, researchers used a fairly high dose of EGCG of up to 850 micro milligrams or so, which is actually a really high dose. And this would be about drinking like 10 to 12 glasses or 10 to 12 cups of green tea per day. So the green tea extract showed, to, showed that the patients uh, or, the, or the subjects, they had lowered body weight about one kilogram and they had also decreased waist circumference as well. Um, the, the physiology where the benefit was shown by affecting something called as ghrelin, which is a hunger hormone. Uh, which was also seen to be lower with catechins. Now that trial found almost 12 kilos of weight loss on average over 12 weeks, which is a really, really fast rate of weight loss. And also it was a randomized double blind placebo controlled clinical trial, which is generally considered to be really, really, really high quality as far as these studies go. I do want to emphasize this study was on obese people. It was on about 100 obese women and obese people. Generally speaking, they can lose weight a bit more quickly than lean people. I also want to say that there are plenty of other studies that have found the weight loss to be a bit more modest, but still relatively reliable if everything is controlled. Also, there appears to be a slight effect of appetite suppression with EGCG. This is not super reliable. There are some studies that conflict with this. But nonetheless, there is some evidence that it can suppress the appetite, which means these people are probably eating less, which is, again, really, really important for weight loss. Much more important than fat oxidation. That's what I'm going to get into a little bit later on. Another thing to note with EGCG is that this fat oxidation effect definitely seems to be stronger when it's combined with caffeine. Now, that's going to be the case if you're just drinking regular green tea, which contains EGCG and caffeine. But caffeine on its own probably the most popular fat burner in the world, given that most people consume it in one form or another every day. And it's got a pretty reliable effect, not just for fat oxidation, but also increased calorie burn. Caffeine can also help uh, metabolize fat from fatty tissues. So what caffeine does, it stimulates the central nervous system, which sends signals to the fatty tissues, telling them to actually break down fat. Uh, so it does so by increasing blood levels of hormone called as epinephrine. Epinephrine is also called as adrenaline, which, uh, uh, which is turned on by signal of caffeine and it travels through the blood to the fatty tissues, creating these signals to break down fat. As I mentioned, there's also evidence it can actually speed up your metabolism, like make you burn more calories. In some studies, it's shown that anywhere between like one and 200 milligrams of caffeine can increase the amount of calories you burn by like three to 11%. So for the average person, that's gonna be between 50 and 200 calories per day. So studies have shown that caffeine can help increase the resting metabolic rate anywhere between three to 11%. The result is even more prominent in individuals who are actually lean. Um, there's a very interesting study that showed that caffeine increased 
uh, fat burning by as much as 29% in lean individuals, while the increase was about 10% in individuals that were obese. Uh, the effect is also more pronounced in younger individuals. So young, lean individuals lose the most weight with caffeine. But it must be said, there's a major caveat to the whole caffeine thing. There's a major caveat to the whole caffeine thing. People become tolerant to the effect of caffeine over a period of time. So in short term, caffeine can boost metabolic rate and can, can help with fat burning. But after a while, people become very tolerant to effect of it and it stops working. So that's a pretty serious issue. The other main very popular fat burning ingredient you see in most of these supplements is capsaicin. You sometimes get that called red pepper extract or cayenne extract, but capsaicin is the ingredient in chili peppers that makes them spicy. And if you wanna talk about fat burners, pretty good evidence that helps you burn fat. So the capsaicin in cayenne pepper has meta metabolism boosting properties. It helps increase the amount of heat your body produces, making your body burn more calories per day. Uh, it does this through a process called as diet-induced thermogenesis, which causes an increase in your metabolism. In one study, people who ate breakfast containing capsaicin, uh, along with some, um, um, along with some tri, uh, trisaturated fatty acids, burned 51% more calories during that meal compared to people who, had, uh, who didn't have it for breakfast. Okay, now 51% sounds huge when you phrase it like that. But when you phrase it as the calories burned went from 7% to 10.7%, it doesn't sound quite as impressive, right? And indeed, for the average person, studies have found that cayenne helps you burn between an extra 50 and 150 calories per day. And there are plenty of studies that have found it's a lot less than that. One study found 10 calories. One found that it increased calories burned by 12% for 30 minutes, which for the average person is going to be an extra 5 calories burned per day, which is not that impressive. So overall effect uh, with capsaicin is very small and people may build, build tolerance fairly quickly. Therefore, I generally do not recommend it to my patients who are trying to lose weight. So unfortunately, if these studies got you really excited because you absolutely love spicy food and eat it all the time, there's a good chance that by now it's probably not doing anything for your metabolism anyway. More importantly than that, these effects are really small even if it was doing something for your metabolism. Like 100 calories sounds like a lot, but that's less than one tablespoon of oil. So you really have to take this into that broader context. Now, don't get me wrong. If you are controlling your calories, they can indeed be useful. Let's say you're supposed to be eating 1900 calories a day. You absolutely can't consume less than 2000 or you get consumed with hunger and that extra 100 calories, that's gonna be important. And anyway, for anyone, so long as you're controlling your calories, these effects can indeed add up over time. But it really depends on how many calories you're eating overall. So that's a really important take home message here. Like, Increased fat oxidation, it's quite nice, especially if you're already very lean, especially if you're like doing uh, bodybuilding, that kind of stuff. Increased thermogenesis, that's pretty nice too. But I think the most important thing is to consume fewer calories. And that's why I think appetite suppression is maybe the most important effect of these products. So I'm not a physician or a dietitian, but it seems that focusing on fat burners with an element of appetite suppression is a better way to go about this. The good news is that cayenne powder and capsaicin does also appear to have appetite suppressing qualities. The data is not quite so clear on green tea extract or in caffeine. But there are a few other interesting ingredients in a lot of fat burners that I think could definitely be useful in your quest for weight loss. The first one that I like is glucomannan. That's a really interesting appetite suppressant. It's made from the root of the Japanese konjac tree. And it looks like about a gram per day could help to decrease food intake just because it expands in the belly, so it makes you less hungry. Some studies do dispute that, but nonetheless, I do think glucomannan is worth thinking about as an appetite suppressant. Psyllium husk is another one. They're made from the seeds of the plantago plant. They're really, really high in soluble fiber and like one, two, maybe three teaspoons of it before a meal definitely seems to be able to reduce food intake as well. 5-HTP is one more pretty interesting appetite suppressant. It appears to help with your appetite by interacting with serotonin, which is a hormone in your brain, thereby making you feel more sated from the food that you do eat. So those are three pretty interesting appetite suppressants I think are worth thinking about. But more importantly, and if I really want to hammer one message to you, is that also eating more protein, more fiber, getting enough sleep and having a regular exercise habit and managing your stress, these can all go a really, really long way to managing your appetite as well. So what have we learned? Well, the best way to lose weight is to track your calories. And if you're doing that, then fat burners are going to be more effective. They might help you shave an extra 100 or so calories off your daily burn. They might 
ever so slightly increase the amount that comes from fat as opposed to carbohydrates from the energy that you burn. And if you are sticking to a low calorie diet, this might make it easier to do that if they contain appetite suppressants. Please note that these are all big ifs and not 100% proven. Now, if you are not tracking your calories and you still wanna lose weight, that is a harder way to lose weight. But if you're doing something relatively simple like intermittent fasting, like you're just skipping one meal and not increasing the amount you eat throughout the rest of the day, then fat burners might be able to help you with that, especially if they're helping to suppress your appetite. Above all, do not think of these as magic pills. They are supplements, and that means what it means. It should be supplemental to a more robust and complete weight loss plan that incorporates calorie tracking, exercise, and a bunch of other stuff. And if you want a more robust weight loss plan, then you should see your physician or a dietitian or a nutritionist to help you through that, because I am not a dietitian, and weight loss is difficult, and it's really good to have some help. So that's everything from me. Uh, if you want to check out my full list of the best fat burners on the market, the ones that I think have the most useful ingredients, you can just Google that full list with Barbend Best Fat Burners.